Science 5, Week 6, Quarter 2, Modes of Reproduction in Plants. Like other organisms, plants can also reproduce using different ways. In the previous lesson, you learned about how plants undergo sexual reproduction. At this point, you will recognize other means of plant reproduction, specifically through uh, vegetative reproduction. Propagation. Vegetative propagation is an asexual reproduction in plants using different parts like stem, roots, and leaves to produce new plant. Asexual reproduction does not involve the use of seeds to propagate. This lesson will give you an understanding on the different modes of reproduction among flowering and non-flowering plants. Doing the different activities or tasks in this lesson will help you identify the different parts that can be used to produce new plants aside from seeds. Preliminary activity. Are you familiar with the horseradish, fiddlehead fern, and mosses? If you know them, have you tried looking at their parts? At the right, it's a chart for you to complete. Try to draw each plant. And these are the answers. For horseradish or malunggay, flowering, fiddle, fiddlehead fern or pako, non-flowering, and mosses or lumot, non-flowering. The previous lesson provides you the understanding about flowers as a productive organ of fruit-bearing plants to produce seeds to grow, to grow new plants. In general, plants are classified into two major groups, flowering and unflowering plants. Flowering plants are those that have obvious flower as accessory organ. In botany or branch of science that deals with the study of plants, they are called angiosperms. Plants that belong to angiosperm family reproduce bisexually or by means of their flowers. The presence of flowers may give clue that the plant produces seeds that mature within the fruits. There are two groups of angiosperms, the dicotyledonous and monocotyledonous plants. Dicotyledonous plants are plants with knitted veins and with two cotyledons in its embryo. Some examples of dicotyledonous plants are beans, peas, daisies, while monocotyledonous plants are bamboos, bananas, and leaves. During task 1, observe your surrounding and list down the plants that possess the given description below on monocot and dicot. For monocot, the seed, one cotyledon, root, fibrous roots, vascular, scattered, leaf, parallel veins and flowers, multiple of three. For dicot, two cotyledon or the seed are two cotyledon, the root, top roots, vascular ring, and leaf, uh, net-like veins, and flower, four or five. Um, complete column for mono cotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous plants. And these are some answers. For mon monocotyledonous plants, we have tulips, onions, and garlics. For dicotyledonous plants, we have rose, cactus, and oak tree. Flowers are important for plants to bear fruits and produce seeds. However, there are also plants that do not use flowers to reproduce. These plants are called non flowering plants. For learning task 2, there are non-flowering plants that do not produce flowers and seeds. There are plants that produce spores. There are plants where seeds are not developed inside the parts of the flower. In this activity, try to rearrange the jumbled letters to know these plants. First, they are plants that use cones to house their seeds. They are woody plants and most of them are trees. Second, they are the simplest plants and are not well adapted to terrestrial life. And the third, they have specialized stem that moves water and nutrients from the roots. Some use spores to grow new plants. And these are the correct answers. For the first word, we have the gymnosperms. Second is bryophytes. And the third, seedless vascular plant. 
For learning task B, based on the given description, identify the classification of plants found on the left side of each description. Mosses. They are small plants that produce spores for reproduction instead of seeds and don't grow flowers, wood, or true roots. Ferns. Ferns generally reproduce by producing spores. Similar to flowering plants, ferns have roots, stems, and leaves. And the conifers, they, they produce one bearing seeds. All living conifers are woody plants and most are trees. Pines are typical example of conifers. And these are the correct answers. First is bryophyte, second is seedless vascular plant, and the last is gymnosperm. In general, non-flowering plants may, may be also classified into two main groups. The first group produces spores, while the second group makes seeds to so reproduce in the absence of flower as accessory organ. Characteristics, flowering plants and non-flowering plants. And these are the answers. Flowers, flowering plants, seed, flowering plants, spores, not flowering plants, vascular system transport or water and nutrients, non-flowering, pollination, flowering plants, seed dispersion through wind and water, flowering plants, and fruit, flowering plants. For learning test number five, a herbarium is an album or scrapbook of compressed flowering, non-flowering plants. It may contain all parts or some parts of plants. To make a herbarium, follow the following steps. First is collect plants or plant parts. Compress using an old book or any material where you can flatten the parts. Second, paste or glue them on each page. And the third, indicate the name of plants in its classification. And this is an example of an album of plants or herbarium. And that ends our lesson for week 6 in our Science 5. Happy learning! Bye-bye!